Hello, in today's video we're going to be discussing vital pulp therapy for primary teeth, more specifically the primary pulpotomy. We're going to be looking at tooth K as in kilo and L as in lima. Clinically you can appreciate large gross caries on K as in kilo and space loss between K and L. Radiographically there is large mesial buccal occlusal lingual caries that approximates the pulp on K and L has distal occlusal buccal lingual caries that approximates the pulp. There is also a noticeable amount of space loss as the distal height of contour has been lost. Vital pulp therapy in primary teeth occur when there is a diagnosis of a normal pulp or reversible pulpitis. A pulpotomy is performed when caries removal results in pulp exposure or after a traumatic pulp exposure. There should be no radiographic signs of infection and no radiographic pathological resorption evident on your film. Our pulpal hemorrhage is going to be controlled by placing dry cotton pellets into the chambers of the pulpotomized teeth. Here I'm removing my initial pellets to assess bleeding control. There was still bleeding coming from the coronal chambers of both teeth, so I replaced both with fresh cotton pellets. When the coronal tissue is amputated, the remaining radicular tissue must be judged to be without excessive hemorrhage that cannot be controlled by a cotton pellet that was placed for several minutes. There should also be no signs of separation, purulence, or necrosis. This is what we'd expect to see as far as hemorrhage control after removal of cotton pellets. There was still excessive bleeding from the chambers. Check for tissue tags or unremoved pulp tissue. If all tissue was correctly removed and there was still excessive hemorrhage, then alternative vital pulp therapy like pulpectomy would need to be performed. We're going to be filling this tooth with Neo Putty by New Smile. My previous video goes into the IFU for this product. I do like the Neo Putty dispensing guides that come with the Neo Putty tubes. It shows how much Neo Putty uh, your staff member needs to dispense for a single pulpotomy, two pulpotomies. I do think it helps eliminate waste of the product and makes it a more cost effective material. For teeth expected to be retained for 24 months or more, only MTA or formacreosol are recommended as your medicament of choice. Other medicaments and techniques such as ferric sulfate, sodium hypochlorite, lasers, or tricalcium silicates only have conditional recommendations. Calcium hydroxide is contraindicated and there is evidence against its use and should not be utilized. Here we're going to obtain the chamber with GC Equiaforte HT. It is a high viscosity glass ionomer cement that auto cures. We want to restore the tooth with a restoration that seals it from micro leakage. For multi-surface or extensive carious lesions, a full coverage restoration is going to be the restoration of choice.
We're going to place two back-to-back -back new smile zirconia posterior crowns and go into a few tips and things that I think about when I place two of these back-to-back. -back. The first learning point is the amount of circumferential reduction that is required to be perigingival or equal gingival to the margin. The way I think about this is taking your standard class 2 MODO box like we would use a 245 and then extending that all the way around. So picture a box form that is going completely around the tooth. That is equivalent to your diamond burr making your chamfer. Then once we are satisfied with our crown size, we're going to take a needle diamond burr and remove that chamfer that we just made. And that will allow us to have enough space in between both teeth to correctly fit and size the crown. So hopefully in this portion of the video you can appreciate the buckle chamfer that is equal or peri-gingival that I'm starting to develop 360 around this tooth. That is probably one of the most important steps when doing back-to-back -back zirconia crown. This is a different example on S's and Sierra that had a zirconia crown where T had a glass anomer sealant. You can appreciate in the second picture the amount of buckle reduction that needs to occur peri or equal gingivally prior to removing your chamfer. This is another case where B as in Bravo had a zirconium crown as A and in Alpha had a glass ionomer sealant. And what I want to show is the amount of chamfer that is visible on the lingual surface that had to occur prior to removing that final chamfer and seating the crown. I think the second most important learning point is maintaining the long axis of your burr and not leaning the burr on the tooth or away, therefore creating an undercut. I think this is one of the most common mistakes when people start to do posterior zirconia crowns as they end up with a very wide base trapezoidal or pyramidal substructure and cannot get their crown to seat fully. Here's an example of a final prep on eyes and indigo. And you can appreciate the cylindrical appearance of the final preparation. It is not a base pyramid or a trapezoid and the crown should easily and passively fit on and off. The step is showing the refinement of the final preparations. We have two cylindrical preps and we're just now going over any sharp angles or excessive occlusal areas. These are our try-on crowns. I like to look at the marginal ridge height as they approximate to the cuspids. This is checking our occlusion. Pediatric zirconia crowns do not tolerate excessive occlusion and the initial patient's occlusion should be replicated. 2% lidocaine with 1 by 100,000 epinephrine is delivered into the attached gingival tissues for hemostasis. Blanching of tissues is an important aspect of achieving hemostasis in this manner. With hemostasis achieved, crowns are going to be delivered and smetted, utilizing BioSEM, a resin-reinforced glass ionomer smet by New Smile. The benefits of this smet is its command curability. Excess smet should initially be left prior to tack curing. This will allow easier removal of cement collar prior to final cure. After final cure, excess cement is removed and rinsed from the mouth. I am fairly happy with the final outcome. I do think that tooth number K could have been a size smaller, but I don't think it would interrupt with the eruption pattern of number 19.